Welcome back to the show, everyone. Uh, pleasure to see our next guest all the time. And uh, we're going to talk a little business with him today as well. Which we is fun. certainly are. We call him the madman. He is Frank Palmer, chairman and CEO of DDB Canada. How are you? Frank, I'm great. Right. Thank you very much. Good. Good. Thanks for joining us. Now, uh, endless fascination, I find, for people, regardless of the television show and even before, but the advertising business, uh, people are pretty fascinated by it. You must find that all the well, time. Well, it, it it's an interesting business. It really is. I mean, it's kind of like uh, uh, show business in a way. You so know? what made it interesting for you? Why did you get into this in the first place? Well, I, I, I went to art school for a few years, and, and uh, I ended up uh, uh, wanting to get, get a job and make some money, and I ended up starting... You fool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I ended up uh, uh, working for a television station in Vancouver called KVOS. You, you know, yeah, been around for yeah. 100... Bellingham Station was on the border. And I got a job there as, a, as an artist, and at, back then I was doing the slides that say, sorry for disruption. You know, the television, <laughs> television service was always going on. Please stay tuned. <laughs> Please stay tuned. That's when they had the old um, Indian... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, the full God. head. And, I'm yeah. having flashbacks. Yes, I do remember yeah, yeah. that. No, well, you're not that old. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, advertising seems to be, you know, it is entertainment, it is the, the industry, but it's also psychology, what you have to do to get into people's heads to make them remember things to make them want a project. So as Frank Palmer in the advertising business, how much are you a psychologist? Well, I, I think after a while uh, you, you become one because you're working with so many different clients that you get to see the, the, the ins and outs of their businesses. So you, you have to find a way to be able to get a consumer uh, you know, tuned on or tuned into the product so that they'll buy it. And it, it takes a lot of time and effort to do that. And it's even more difficult today to get clients convinced to do it because a lot of them don't want to take the risk. Well, that yeah. brings us to Mad Men because in last week's episode, Roger uh, said something really funny. He said, well, that's a client idea if I've ever heard one. Well, yeah, that was the episode when the client started singing the song. and, and, and uh, Heinz is on my side. Trust, trust, trust me, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> That's you a client. Please, well, your client, you got to right? find a way to convince the client that it was a good idea, but you have a better one. <laughs> right, right. That, that's awesome. Well, but... no, but it, it's true. I mean, I've I've had uh, I've had clients over the years that have suggested that we do something, and and uh, and they like a color, you know, they like yeah. to see their ad in blue or green or red or something like that, and you have to say, well. Uh, you know, based on a certain amount of research, we think it's probably better than... So you have to be a diplomat as well as a yeah, psychologist. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's getting really difficult because I, I think about 95% of the commercials that are today are, that are running are, are very poor. Is that because of fear? Is it Because when I look at your ad campaigns, I mean, even looking at your website, you know, you guys really push the envelope sometimes in terms well, we, of your visuals and your, your process. And we still are the most awarded advertising agency in Canada by times two. So if you're looking at a baseball analogy where you got an old star that's hit some home runs, uh, we, we could stop entering award shows and, and probably not uh, uh, still be in the lead 10 years from now. That's how many we've won. So you're doing all right. But it, it, having a sense of humor in advertisements, it seems like a lot of companies aren't willing to go that route. But that's what consumers want to see. They want to see an ad that entertains them, draws them in, and you know what the but product is. But, <laughs> but do they? See, well, that's the question. This is the wormhole that you no, yeah. and, 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 and any show or, or uh, ad, you, you want consumers to really fall in love with the product. You know, you want them to be able to feel good about what they're doing, what they're buying. And if you can turn a consumer on to uh, who are very informed today, more so than ever before, because if you're going to buy a product or service or a car, you know as much about the car as the salesperson How about who sells it. When we're, kind of, we're talking about turning on people and yeah, that we, sort we, of thing. Yeah, we, we did those ads and, and they've been very effective. <laughs> But how is that line with that kind of ad? Because you're not allowed to make certain claims. No, There's all it, sorts it, it of rules. It's more difficult to do that, particularly with those products, um, uh, more so than ever, because the the the, the law, uh, you know, the medical law, the the, the claims you can yeah, make, the, the, what you the can messaging. and what you can't say, and yeah. and then subtly we've been doing certain things with the ads that sort of give you the idea what it's all about and. <laughs> and and um, they've been very successful. How has this business, I mean, uh, throughout your career, how much has it changed? Because you mentioned consumers being far more savvy now, far more knowledgeable, but, but also more socially connected now as well. So the ability for people to spread a message, a positive message is huge, and a negative well, message is huge. Well, trying to reach them in, in ways that uh, inform them is getting more difficult because, as you say, social media, the Internet, and... Mm -hmm. uh, everything else. They've got so many different channels to watch and listen to, and so it becomes more difficult. So that's where I think that the message that we produce and want to do it has to be entertaining. And, and somebody who wants to watch it because they can PVR it, they can turn it yeah. off, and 
And, and of course, then you're spending millions or thousands of dollars and trying to get something and nobody's watching. Well, and especially in a PVR generation, because you I know when forward. I watch TV, you fast forward. But if you see something that captures you, you'll go back. And, yeah, but you can PVR it. and not watch commercials. Yeah. And you can, t but, but when we did all the Budweiser work, uh, especially for the Super Bowl, people watch for as much for the football game as they do for the commercial And why aren't ads like that year round? Because the Super Bowl, because the ads they, are the entertainment. Well, they, 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 I think that, I'm not saying every client's not brave, but there's not as many brave clients. They don't want to take any risk. Uh, the, the, the work has changed. You don't have the same kind of uh, uh, to the C-suite. You don't get in mm -hmm. front of the president as much. You get the marketing director, which is fine. Yeah. But they're going to also come sometimes double-guessing what this yeah, person wants. Yeah, they've got wants. a job. Yeah, someone, yeah, yeah. someone above, Some, them, someone above the them. And, and then... It gets filtered. And so then, Mad Men, as a television show, everybody thinks they know how the advertising business works because of this program. How accurate is it uh, on it, that show? It, it's it's accurate. It really is. I mean, I was on the fringe. I wasn't there quite when the show was being produced. <laughs> yeah. But 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 I was on the fringe, and and there was drinking in the office, and there was smoking in the office, and and the, and the dress was more professional back then. I mean, people in the creative people even wore suits. Yeah. And. Uh, but the show now, you know, after about the third season, now it's into the fifth season, I think they're stretching it a bit now because it's getting into all the uh, outside of the office. And, yeah. and whether she's got, a, a, you know. <laughs> I like that you don't like that. Everyone well, no, else but is like, I, I, let's I, find I think out more about I think, Betty, it's, but... I think that the show in its pure form was more entertaining because it was more about the business yeah. and not about the lives of... Uh, yeah. Or if uh, Betty put on weight. Yeah, well, Betty in her fat suit. And, and, and it was, I think, the genesis of that whole show is that idea that, that advertising is something we encounter so many times during a day. And, and seeing the history, and especially that crux point mm -hmm. where they're talking about in the 60s, advertising really changed during that phase. And, and what? Trust me, it was much more fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was much more fun in the 70s and 80s. That's because everyone was drunk. Well, well, not only that, you couldn't be reached. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Very true. You, you couldn't hide. No, now, you, you can't Frank, hide. Frank, no. was that really you on The Real Housewives of Vancouver last night? It, it was really me. Yeah, it was really me. <laughs> okay. Blinking, you miss. Blinking, you miss it. He really awesome. was on it, and uh, it's no coincidence. Coming up next on the show, Marika Palmer, same last name, no coincidence. His wife will be joining us because she was on Real Housewives of Vancouver. Frank, thank you so much. Thanks, You're Frank. Welcome. Right. Appreciate thank it. You. Pleasure to be here. We're going to take a break, come back with Marika right after this.